Hey everyone, this is Arjit. You may be watching this in our Facebook group or YouTube channel. This is um, a YouTube channel uh, focused on business analysis from Master on Project Management. Our goal is to help you do better in your roles, help you get into these roles, and then of course when you're in these roles, help you do better in these positions. This topic today I'm going to cover is professional looking Excel documents. Last three weeks, we worked on formatting Word documents to make sure that your documents that you're submitting to your peers, to your management, look professional enough. Today, I'm going to cover Excel. How do you send data that looks professional um, for your management to review and look at? I'm not going to be covering pivot tables. I'm not going to be showing you how to do formulas because I feel like there's lots of content already out there for that type of stuff. But what nobody's really showing you is how to send data, right? Any data that you may need to send for various reasons, how do you send it when where it looks presentable, right? Oftentimes when I get Excel documents from my peers or anybody else that needs me to look at data, it's not in a printable format, right? It's all over the place. It's not formatted nicely. So again, today's training is focused on if you are working with data, um, Excel spreadsheets, how do you send them across so that they look presentable, they're printable, and they look um, professional enough so that way they're not scattered, right? So um, let me share my screen and we'll get started with that. As um, always, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. Um, and if you're watching this, also let me know if you're watching this live or on a replay. Um, if you're watching this on a replay, if you have questions, leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to start sharing my screen. This is an Excel document, right? It has lots and lots of data, right? So the first thing that you generally want to do when you get an Excel document to look at, um, this is what it looks like, right? If I were to make this bigger, um, just so you can see my screen a little bit better, you have, you know, and again, this is just a document that I pulled off or downloaded from somewhere. It has no meaning whatsoever to our training, uh, not to our training, but uh, no meaning whatsoever for what I'm trying to show you. I just downloaded an Excel document so I can show you how I would, if I needed to send this to someone, to my peers, to my management um, for them to review something, how would I format it so that it doesn't look like this, right? It does not look like this, right? Um, how would I, so if you, if I were to print this right now, this would be 204 pages long. So you see how this is going to print out as of now, if I made no changes to it. And we definitely, you guys do not want to send anybody um, an Excel document that's going to be 204 pages long, even though most of us are working remote and are going to just look at this on their laptop or their screen, we still want to format data that's printable because lots and lots of people do print out um, things to read and review, okay? So here's what I would do when if I got this document. In the very beginning, what I would do is I would um, highlight the first column and make it bold, right? I generally like to add lots of colors so that it's easier to read and disseminate what type of information is being displayed. So generally, if you highlight the first um, row, I generally like to put everything in a dark blue. So I, you know, color painted this blue and the text, which is right next to, next to the paint, um, I made white. So now you can see very easily that this is the header row and everything below is the data under the header row, right? The next thing that I generally do is I try to limit the data that is needed, right? So for example, again, totally making this up, right? If I think that these three columns are important and this one is not, so I generally try to limit the data that's on the screen so that way we're not bombarding our readers with way too much information than that's needed. And let's say, you know, for some of the columns that are not needed for display, I'll hide them, right? And now let's say this is the data that we want to have. Now, if I go to file and print, I'm still having 204 pages. All that I was able to do was kind of consolidate the data that um, is showing up on the page, right? So I only removed some. The next thing I try to do is I try to resize some of the columns. And you can resize some of the columns based on 
um, you know, markers here. So if you go hover across the columns right here, you don't see the, the plus sign, but if you hover over just the end of the column, you'll start to see that, that, that plus sign. Um, and you can try to organize your data in this way. Okay. The other thing I always try to do is make sure that my data is being wrapped. So generally what I like to do is I like to highlight all the columns I want this to highlight. And then there is a button in the home panel is called, called um, wrap text. So if you click on wrap text, it will um, automatically wrap a lot of your text for you. That uh, the spreadsheet looks like it was already done. So if this did not have wrap data, this is what it would look like. But since it does have wrap data, uh, wrap text, you can see that it is wrapping around to the next column. Okay. I'm going to, again, kind of reformat some of the columns to make sure that they're looking all right. But you can still see that, um, I'm not sure if you can see this on my screen, I'll make this a little bit bigger, but you see a line, a dotted line here and a dotted line over here, which shows me or tells me that this data is being poured over two pages, right? So we don't want that. So the first thing I generally try to do is go to page layout, and I like to change the orientation to landscape. Most of the time when you're working with Excel data, it generally um, fits a lot better and more data if it's landscape versus portrait. So generally, I always try to have Excel data in a landscape. And then I always also try to reduce um, the margins, right? So if you have your data highlighted, um, go to um, margins, and I generally like to have narrow um, margins for my Excel documents. If you can see on my screen, this line is still showing that we still have two pages. I'll show you what that looks like if I go to file and print. Right, you still we now have 224 pages instead of the 240 because we made it land, um, landscape and then we kind of removed some of the columns, but we still have 224 pages. Right, so let's see how we're going to do that. So, how do you try to consolidate all the data in one that you want? The easiest way to do that is generally, I like to um, let's say there's a few ways that you can do that. So, first, I'm going to talk about um, look at this. Another thing I wanted to show you is if I hit print and if I go onto page two, you don't see the title, right? You don't see the title coming up. So anybody that does print it will have to go to the first page to know what the titles are. So a quick fix for that is um, you want to go to, I believe, data layout. Yeah, so page layout on your ribbon, you have file, home, insert, draw, and page layout. On page layout, there's a button called print titles. When you click on that print titles, right, it wants you to tell it, right, tell, give it a command of which rows do you want to, um, you know, want to repeat. So you go to repeat, a rows to repeat at the top. If you click on this arrow, it will let you select which rows you want to um, repeat on every page. So if you click on the first one and you hit OK, it says, you know, it puts a command that um, the Excel document should now print the top of each row on each page. OK, so if you click on that and now let's go to file print. Now you will see that the top row is being repeated for each page so it makes it easier for the reader to see what data they're looking at okay now i'll go back to page layout i'll go back to print titles again because there's a few things that i want to show you here right if you go onto the page this is where um, again you can change from orientation portrait to landscape you can do that here um, you can fix your margins generally i like to do um center um, vertically or horizontally, right? Vertically means that um, across it's gonna be centered and horizontally means that it's gonna be centered this way. Generally, I like to play around with this to make sure what looks right. Most of the time, I like to see my do data, uh, documents or data um, centered horizontally because it just looks a little bit better. Um, header and footer, this is where you can put your headers and footers on your Excel documents, right? So generally, um, 
haven't done this in a while, but let's see. So generally you could do page one of one. And what that does is it automatically will say page one of 240 and 250, whatever it looks like for you. And then if you click on cheat, this is where you were able to repeat the top row. You can also do a few other things like, you know, add grid lines or remove grid lines, depending on what it is that you want to look at. Okay. So I'm going to hit okay here and I'm going to show you what we just did. So if you hit print, now you see that this data on the spreadsheet is horizontally centered, right? It looks appealing. It looks nice, right? And we also have at the bottom our page, you know, page one of 250. This is what we want or the data that we have, right? So here, that's what we just added. Now, how do we get rid of this one column? And how do we make sure that this is all the data that we want presented, but I want it in one page so that, you know, it's not the data isn't being poured out over two different pages. So the way to do that is I generally go to um, view and I go to page uh, page break view and you see how now you have blue lines. These are the lines that show you how the data is going to print out. And if you have columns that you want presented, what I generally do, and this is the easiest way to do, do this, again, there's maybe many, many different ways of doing the same things that I'm showing you. I'm just showing you what I know and what I do. So again, um, keep it, leave it, you know, do whatever you want to do with, but this is my approach. This is what I generally do, and this is what I'm teaching you. So generally, um, the, you see this blue column. I will move this over. So now that that last row column that was being poured out onto the second page is now um, being consolidated and shown on the same page. So once you fix that, right, you go back to normal view, and now you see that that dotted line is on the right um, instead of the left. And let me show you what that looks like if I hit file print. Now we have 118 pages instead of 250 because all the data is being represented on one page. So just looking at this from what it was before where we started, it's starting to look a lot better, right? You guys, it's starting to look a lot more clean. So let me see what other things that do I generally do? Oh, the other thing. So let's say now this is 118 pages, right? But for printing, you only want, um, you know, somebody to um, have just maybe the first two pages or something. So you can um, set a print area. Um, the way that you do that is you go to home. Um, let me see, where's the print area? Okay, so let's say it is 118 pages, but you only want um, somebody to print, you know, just the first couple of pages. So you could highlight whatever you want them to see and then say um, print area, set print area. And what that does is while they'll have the full file, if they do go to print it, because it's a lot of data, you know, and you think that, you know, maybe the first three pages are enough for them to get a sense of the type of data is there. If you select select print area, even with that whole file, they'll only be able to print the first three pages. Okay, so that's how you do that. And I think that's about it. Um, generally, when I try to copy and paste um, uh, Excel data into a Word document or PowerPoint presentations, I think I talked about this in the other um, session. What I like to do is I like to add a column in a row so it's easy for me to grab data. And then what I do generally is I will grab it like this, for example. I will do copy, and then let's say if I wanted to put this in a Word document. Document, copy, paste. And if you want to expand it or make it look bigger, you expand to the, um, you expand from the corners only, right? Um, that will keep the integrity of the data and make um, the document a little bit better. So that's really all I have for Excel for you guys. As I said, I'm not teaching you pivot tables. I'm not teaching you how to do um, this stuff. Oh, the filters. So let me show you how to do filters. This this doc this um, document already has filters. So let me remove them um, and show you how to add them. So 
this is pretend, you know, imagine that um, this is 118 pages worth of data, but you're only interested in a specific NAICS code, for example, right? So let's say if you wanted to filter the data um, based on some criteria, the way that you do that is you highlight the title row. This is important. You always have to highlight the, the title um, row and go into the data area and then click on filter, right? And then you can go ahead and select which filter. So for me, 541512 um, is one the one that I would like to see. So now um, going from 118 pages, you can see how I was able to drill down um, a lot more. You can always add more filters, right? 541519 um, is another one that I'd like to look at. Another one is 541, 511, right? So again, as you add more filters, you're adding more data. How do you know you have filters in place? Generally, you can look at the, um, the um, rows and see that they're in blue, right? And the way that you remove filters in the event that you want to, you generally just go to filter and select all, and now you have all of your data, right? You can also filter with any of, so this one looks like the easier one to do, contract type. Let's say if you only wanted to see, um, you know, contracts, you can filter by that. And now you have um, less SIR data than you did before. So again, filters come in um, very handy, um, but make sure that, you know, when you're presenting data, if you have filters, remove them if need be uh, to make sure that your data looks, looks right. Um, other information, um, sort comes in handy a lot. So let's say if I wanted to sort this, um, you can do A through Z. If you hit expand, it now lets you exp um, sort all of your data by, you know, um, from top to bottom based on numbers. You could do it the other way around, just generally based on what you guys need to do. Okay. I think those are some of the common things that as a business analyst, as a scrum master, as a PM, if you're working with data or need to send data over, those are generally the things that I like to do. I like to format my documents. I make, like to make them look professional enough. Um, I like to make sure that anybody that's looking at the data has um, an, a document that they can print, review, and um, be able to make decisions. Um, the other thing that I see a lot of newer people doing is when you're sending data, summarize what that data has, right? So don't send your managers, don't send your peers, just an Excel document, right? Um, and just tell them what it is, explain to them what your analysis of the data is showing you. So for example, if you're sending data about the number of tickets that you're seeing for a particular project, number of defects, number of um, high severity defects versus low severity defects, right? What is your assessment of that, right? You can say based on um, the attached data, you know, your Excel spreadsheet. Um, I'm my conclusion is that we need we have a lot of you know smaller. Uh, again, you guys totally making this up. Uh, it seems looking at the data that we have a lot of you know lower impact and defects, which leads me to believe that we may need to have a dedicated release um, to solve all of these um, non-critical problems, but it's not something that, you know, we need to worry about right now, right? So again, giving somebody data is, giving somebody presentable data is, is, is good, but also take it a step further and show them, tell them what your analysis of the data is. What are you trying to showcase with that data? So again, that's what I have done in my career. That's what I suggest. Um, that's what I would, um, you know, highly recommend that you guys do. I hope you guys found this helpful. Next week, I'm going to do something similar with PowerPoint. Again, my goal is to not teach you guys the basic stuff that you find in other YouTube videos. My goal is to show you for, from a formatting standpoint, how you can make your documents and things that you're doing already make them look a little bit more presentable and a little bit more polished and professional. Okay. Thank you so much for being here with me. Let me know if you have any comments. Let me know if you have any questions. And as always, let me know if you have other training um, topics that you'd like me to cover and I'm more than happy to do so. And that's all I have for you today. It's great seeing you. Thank you. And I'll see you again. Bye.